Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to play with um, a kind of standby, cheap staple art supply that um, I haven't used in a while. Actually, I except I've been using them a lot lately because they're a lot of fun. They are water-soluble graphite and they're not expensive. I just got these at a local art store for $1.75 a stick. You may already have some in your stash and um, it's basically like a big chunk of lead, uh, but you can add water to them and dissolve them. Um, and the nice thing is after they dry, if you have added water, you can still erase them. And that's why I have an eraser shield in case I want to, you know, erase small bits. Uh, so I grabbed these in a few different uh, hardnesses. So I got a 2B, which is um, very similar to like your number two pencil. I got a 6B, which is a darker, blacker graphite, and a 9B, which is even darker and softer. And I think we'll sketch a little squirrel today. I'm going to start with the lightest one. And I haven't decided whether I'm going to add any watercolor to it, so I have my, my watercolor, uh, one of my little watercolor sets there just in case. So I'm going to start with an oval. I figure squirrels are good for fall. They're out there getting the acorns off the lawn and everything. So I'm going to start with this kind of oval for the kind of back and rump area. Then I'm going to do a smaller oval for like the uh, kind of uh, shoulder arm area. And then I'm going to do another oval, kind of egg shaped for the mouth, for the face, the head and the snout. And then I'm going to connect the three and a little tail that goes up like that. And I'm drawing pretty lightly because, um, because I want to be able to, you know, control what I have for a darkness. I don't want to have too much dark in right off the bat. Got the little arms in there and he's got a little nut that he is or she is enjoying there and probably been all over him. I'm going to put a bit, I'm using a reference photo from Paint My Photo, but I'm going to put a bigger acorn in his paws because we've got so many acorns in our, around our house right now that I thought it would be fun to maybe even throw a couple other acorns on the ground. I can sketch them from memory pretty well because holy moly, we have so many acorns. So I got a couple little acorns down there and he's got two little alert ears because obviously he is keeping an ear out to make sure there's no uh, nobody gonna bother him or steal his nut and I'm just gonna shape the face a little bit oh my gosh cute he's cute oh so cute a little smile so happy he's got his nut <laughs> and I'll give him a little nose all right so like places I might want to erase later would be like the little sparkle of the eye and so now I can add a little detail. I'm not going to go too crazy with the detail because I haven't even softened anything yet. So we get the tail fluff. And then if I want to add any shadowing in the ground, I can go ahead and do that right now. So if I want to go in with some darker color, and you can just follow along. If you don't have these, and you just want to follow along and sketch with your pencil. Totally, totally awesome. Do that. That is wonderful. Um, I think that... You can, your drawing is probably the most important skill um, for you to learn as you're, you know, becoming an artist, creating art, um, and it's not expensive to do. You can use any pencils you have. You can use, you know, you can create beautiful art with a number two pencil. You don't have to go out and, and get anything special. You don't have to have an art supply store in town. You don't have to have um, a lot of money to do that. And his tail isn't too bushy, actually, from the photo that I'm using, so I'm not going to make it too bushy. And um, just, uh, I don't think I need to add too much for shading because I know these um, these pencils are pretty... Once we add the water to it, they get pretty dark. Okay, I'm just going to use a watercolor brush. And I'm just, I am working on watercolor paper, but this you could do this on... Um, on a regular drawing paper as well. Maybe something a little bit bigger than that. Let's try that. This is just clear water. And if you, you know, you're wetting the paper and you wish you had a little more color, you can actually pick up the color from the graphite stick. And you might even have some water soluble graphite and not realize it. If you've ever done a sketch, like, and then watercolored over it and noticed that your lines are smudging, that's probably water soluble graphite and I don't know why some pencils do that and they're not uh, marked but I think it just depends on um, on uh, the specifications of the pen pencil maker really so I'm just going in and we're basically just toning a little shadow under those acorns but you can see 
uh, how easy it is to do. It almost looks like an ink wash when we do this. And it will dry a little bit lighter, but, um, but not, there's not as much shift as like with a um, with a watercolor. It's just basically the you know the darkness of the, the you know wet paper basically. I'm just making it look a little bit darker. You can still smudge it out if you decide you wanted a little bit more shading. You could smudge with your fingers on any of this and um, and make it smudge out a little bit more. So if I do want to add a little color, I think I do. I'm just going to use. Um, you can use whatever watercolors you have. I'm using my Selenier because they're not as um, as dark and potent, and I don't think I'm going to have to fight as much uh, with the colors if I use my um, my Selenier as opposed to using a color that's a little bit more robust and vibrant. But you don't have to do that. I just think it's, it kind of gives you the same look as like the Graphitint pencils from Derwent if you like using those. But this is actually probably a little more versatile because you can just do the graphite and then you can use whatever colors you have. You don't have to go out. So honestly, I mean, you could get one stick of these and probably have the same amount of versatility as like a set of graphic graphitin pencils. I do like them. They're fun. But I mean, if you're looking to downsize or just not spend so much money on supplies or just have stuff that does double duty, then I'd recommend that. I'm going to add a little of that brown into the... Um, into the acorns too. You'll notice that these dissolve really easily. I don't have to put a lot of pressure, a lot of water. These are super soft brushes. So um, so just keep that in mind. You don't want to be scrubbing at them. They're going to dissolve just fine. And this is just a little project for fun. I'm kind of in a want to do projects for fun type of mode right now. <laughs> and um, I'm going to show you about doing a wash. I'll just use that same 6B. You know, just pick it up on your um, on your brush and you can make beautiful washes and it does have a just a pretty texture to it the graphite is um, I call it a mineral I guess graphite is a mineral isn't it um, it gives you a beautiful subtle um, texture and I just like the versatility you just get a little bit more um, use than if you were to just, you know, sketch and smudge, or if you were to just do watercolor, you've got this extra versatility, which can, you can get tone and, um, and shape and all those different things. The acorn caps there. Then I'm going to let this dry and uh, we'll go in and do some detail work. I think I might, might get the eyeball liquefied before we go in to let it dry. I'm working around the sparkle, but if you forget it, if you kind of go over the sparkle, no worries because you can um, you can go in and erase it. Oh, look at that! It's almost inky, isn't it? And this is that same six B. This isn't even the uh, this isn't even the nine B. I haven't used the nine B because I thought it was just a little bit too too dark. Really fun stuff. It's kind of, you can get a little over, um, go a little overboard with it because it is so easy to get a really dark uh, value. But I just love how it kind of reminds me of, of, uh, of ink. It's such a simple thing, and sometimes, I mean, me personally, right right now, lately, I've just been, like, wanting to go back to simple. <sighs> Feeling overwhelmed, kind of, with a lot of choices that are out there. It's like, just give me a pencil or something, you know? I mean, I think we all have times like that where we just want to slow down and try something different. All right, let's, just, let's let this dry and then come back and see what else we want to do to it. It's dry and I like how it kind of mellows out a little bit. So don't throw away your work if you are looking at it and you're like, oh, I don't like it. It's too, you know, it's, it's just 
too dark or um, it just doesn't look right. You can lighten it up with an eraser. Now the watercolors are not going to lighten up generally with an eraser, so kind of keep that in mind. If you've mixed watercolors in there with it, you are going to limit how how much erasability it has, but they are able to round out the, um, the body a little bit. If I want, I can... Um, the lines are a little bit big in this erasure shield, but I can go in and pull out some little highlights with that in the tail if I want to. Um, I can't really get a tiny sliver with this erasure shield. shield. There's probably ones that are a little bit better, but uh, but that's what I have, so that's what I'm that's what I'm using. Um, I also think it would be cool to add some more detail to the squirrel. I'm going to. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use this. I mean, you could you could whittle it with a knife a little bit and get it a little more um, sharp. I tend to like a little um, more expressive strokes. I know I can pull out a finer line with this with my um, with my wet paintbrush if I want to, and I could smudge it with my finger if I wanted to. I like that versatility. I can kind of shade with the edge of it just like I would a pencil in a sketchbook. And this is also, I think, a nice bridge. I, a lot of a lot of kids I noticed, um, just like in my years of teaching, they'll get really comfortable with pencil, and it tends to be more male students and female students for whatever reason. They'll get really comfortable with the pencil, and then they they just they they ex they get the they get the results they expect from the pencil, and it almost becomes a crutch, and they they're afraid kind of to break out. I think because they they like the realism they're able to get with the pencil. And then they're a little nervous about um, breaking into using another another type of media. I'm just gonna try to lighten up under the eye a little bit there um, because they don't get the uh, the reward of all that realism. Because I mean, there's very there's less variables when you're just using a pencil on paper as opposed to using. Um, as opposed to using color, once you add color, you add more variables. So if you're able to use something like a graphite stick, then you're you have that one variable of one color, and then you can add your water to it and get the other variable of of kind of the blending of paint that way. So I think it's a nice bridge medium, um, or maybe a nice step before you go into marker art. I know a lot of kids um, and adults too enjoy using like Copic markers, but you introduce so many more variables when you get into marker art, and um, this is just a nice way to kind of learn toning and shading, and a lot of times you can get a very similar effect because you can lay down a grayscale and then you can um, you can go in and add detail. So under the eye here, I want to have a little bit more shadow, and I'm just you could smudge it out with your finger if you're not using water soluble graphite, totally. Just darkening up some of those areas that I've painted in. Soften the nose, shape a little bit. I think I want the eyeball a little bit darker, so I'm gonna go right in with this 9B stick. I did I've still been able to keep that highlight in there, so hopefully I can I can keep that. If you feel like you're getting way too much water with a softer brush, you can, you can use like a um, like an acrylic painter's brush. They're a little bit stiffer than a watercolor brush. Um, and if you're working on watercolor paper, you should it shouldn't damage it or anything. You should be fine. This is fun. This is so fun. I hope everyone tries it. <laughs> it is so inexpensive. And then you could mix it, if you have watercolor pencils, you can mix it with your watercolor pencils and get another layer of versatility that way. I've just pretty much tinted it so I have like a little bit of a sepia... sepia feeling there. Or is it sepia? I know somebody's going to correct me. <laughs> it's one or the other, I mean, hey, right half the time, right? It's just fun. It's just fun. It's something I want to share because it's fun. Um, and then I think I'm going to do a little bit more with um, with the grasses. I think that maybe I'll take a little bit of 
yellow and green. I like to add a, other colors I've been using, just kind of get a little bit of a, a toning in there. Now I'm working in a sketchbook, and these are, and I was inspired to try this because um, a friend on Facebook had shared a recent haul. It's a fellow reader and a viewer, you probably know her from the community, Gracie. She had just gotten the Wimpower sketchbook from um, Strathmore. I'm like, oh, I bought one of those. I haven't even tried it. And you know it's a, sketch a sketchbook instead of a pad if it's got the spiral bounds. And that means if it's got spiral binding like that, you're meant to use the paper in the book like this and then just turn to the next page. So I'm like, this is a perfect place to do kind of like a non-consequential sketch. You know, if this turns out complete rubbish, I don't have to post it. And it kind of gives you the freedom of, I'm not going to worry about it because this is my sketchbook. It's not going to, it doesn't have to be framed. It doesn't have to be shown anywhere. Nobody's got to see it. I'm just going to have fun playing with it. And then I can go in there with my brush. Any of the little um, fuzzy hairs that I've drawn up here, I can just refine and accentuate. And it's just a fun medium and it's easy and it's inexpensive and you could use this on um, drawing paper very easily because I'm not adding a ton of water. I'm nowhere near adding as much water as I would in a typical watercolor painting. So, um, so you don't have to worry about about the paper buckling. Perfect for sketchbook work. And I mean, if you're if you're somebody who likes to, you know, do little quick sketches on the go. I mean, having a little sketchbook and a little stick of this water soluble graphite, and this is Lyra, but I've seen them made by Derwent and uh, Generals, I think. Different different companies make them. They're anywhere between for a dollar or two a piece. Um, you can get it in a wood pencil with a smaller lead if you prefer that. Um, so, you know, easy to find. Every art store should have them. Cheap. Cheap and fun. What could be better? <laughs> Who could ask for more? I love this. Uh, this is color that I got in the uh, Sennelier, Sennelier set that I, um, I'm really liking that set the more I use it. Um, it's Naples Yellow Deep and it's, it's like a clean mellow yellow ochre. It doesn't have the white added that um, a lot of Naples Yellow has. It's just such a lovely lovely color. I've never used that color before. I've used regular Naples Yellow and I never found that color to be all that exciting, but I do like the Naples Yellow Deep. It's just, it's really nice. Now if you wanted to put something in the background, you could. I would try to keep it a fairly light value just so you have, um, so you don't lose any of the uh, stuff you've already done. So what I'm doing is I added some more Naples Yellow Deep and some water on my mixing area and I'm just gonna basically tap and pat some color in there. Just to, I want to just give it a little bit of a different texture, a little bit of light, maybe an out of focus, far away, um, far away trees. So I didn't really give a good, um, a good workout to this paper, so I don't really know what I think of it yet. But for this purpose, it's certainly um, good, and I'll probably just throw it in my car or something so I can, um, so I can just try it out when I'm out plein air sketching or something, but um, I liked it that it was made a little bit more ecologically, and I think you actually got, I think it's the same price as a Strathmore pad in the same size, but you get more, um, I think you get a couple more sheets of paper if I'm not mistaken. I think I paid about $7 for this. This is um, 15 sheets, and I think the regular pad is 12 sheets, um, 6 inches by 9 inches. I'm thinking I paid about $7 for this, but maybe I used a coupon and paid that much. I'm not sure. I got it at Michael's um, a couple months ago, but, uh, but there you have it. I hope you give uh, sketching a try. Try these. They're fun. They're cheap, um, and sometimes you just need a little something to bring you back to a simpler time of art and to... Um, and, you know, some of us just trying something new or doing something you haven't done in a long time just kind of rekindles that artistic spark. I just heard a, um, a interview with George Carlin and he had a wonderful quote, I'm paraphrasing, but he said, um, art has no finish line. Art is a race against yourself with no reward. And I'm like, that is just, that's perfect. It's, there's no finish line. It's, it's all about um, creating the artwork that you want to create. And if I can help give you the tools that you can do that, then I feel like I've done my job. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that like button and subscribe, share it with your friends, all that good jazz. And we'll see you next time. Happy crafting.